Hello everyone. So before I start this video, I want to be clear that this is for educational and harm reduction purposes only. This is my personal experience with smoking DMT and everyone else is going to have a completely unique experience based on their set and setting. What is set and setting? S set is your mindset during the experience. It's um, your thoughts, moods, and expectations before it. And your setting is the actual physical and social environment that you're in when you're doing whatever substance you're doing. <laughs> and those two things contribute hugely, I'd say 80%, maybe even more than that to your experience. So I'm going to tell you about my experience. So let's get into it couple days after this happened I actually wrote down everything that happened in detail it was at my friend's lake house during a Thanksgiving potluck and <laughs> I definitely wasn't the best environment because there were so many people there um, but while we were mingling my friend came up to me us and told us that he had DMT on him and just like casually <laughs> it was like I've always been curious about smoking DMT. I've done a couple ayahuasca ceremonies, but I'm the type of person that will take any opportunity to expand my awareness and understanding of this reality. That's just who I am. <laughs> um, regardless of risk or how stupid it may seem at the moment, I just, it's just me. So this took place in one of the bedrooms in the lake house. Um, I'm going to start reading it now. My friend who was administering the DMT led me through a guided meditation and walked me through the process beforehand so I felt safe and secure in his presence. So when it was time, I felt a little bit of anxiety well up in my body, but I just ignored it and went ahead anyway because I just wanted to do it. <laughs> and so I took two dab hits of DMT with my partner by my side. It was harsh and bitter, but not as bad as I imagined. So you inhale and you try to hold it as long as you can. I didn't because my anxiety kind of got to me, but next thing I know, everything went white and oscillations of complex geometric patterns began to rapidly fade in out of my vision, accompanied by an ominous buzzing sound. It was like all encompassing and I, distinctly remember one of the patterns looking like a contorted goblin with a long nose and mischievous smirk. I actually drew a picture of it. I'm gonna... I'm gonna show you guys. I remember feeling the energy of this goblin. It felt dark and sinister. And then I began to lose all sense of my body and found myself observing the room's slowly turning clockwise and leaving many trails behind itself so the room just was just completely in my vision it was just the room and then it started turning and leaving trails sort of like in like windows xp or something sometimes an error would happen where you would like start uh moving around a window and it would start leaving like trails behind it that's what it looked like and it was so freaky it started to form just like a mandala of all the colors in the room but it wasn't a pretty sight the only way i could describe what happened to me next was that it felt like i was stuck inside a computer simulated glitch or an error along with that i felt a sense of doom as if i was stuck in that state forever like this was what purgatory felt like the mandala's twists and turns felt like a visual representation of being suffocated, never being able to catch a breath. It felt chaotic, like I was constantly trying to escape the discomfort, but I couldn't. I was stuck in it, and it wouldn't let up. It, it almost felt torturous, like what hell is like, and at this point I completely forgot that I took DMT. Then when I finally got out of that state, I remember opening my eyes, looking around the room and feeling incredibly disoriented and confused. I looked at my partner and I didn't know who he was, let alone what he was. I looked at my friend and felt the same. I was like super confused. I looked at the 90s era posters in the room and felt so disgusted by them for some reason. 
Um, I heard my friends in the living room talking and laughing, but none of them seemed real. They all seemed like made up ideas, like vagrants of my imagination. Everything had lost its meaning. The room turned into hell, and I thought I was stuck in that state forever. And I put in parentheses, maybe because time ceases to exist under the influence of DMT, since everything feels eternal, like whatever you're experiencing, it feels like forever. Um, I could barely speak, and whenever I tried to, I felt like I would run out of breath and die. So sorry if this is like so. If this is so intense. <laughs> This cycle went on for a while, just me looking around the room, staring into my partner's eyes, trying to understand what he was and what happened. Then the pain came. I felt such discomfort and uneasiness in my body, like stabbing, sensation, sen stabbing sensations throughout my face, complete helplessness on top of that. Since I knew I couldn't escape the torture at this point, in trying to escape it would be futile i just surrendered to it and i just constantly felt like i was on the brink of death at a certain point and i was desperately hold desperately holding on for dear life <laughs> um and i was like blinking in a in and out of existence too then memories that i've forgotten would repeatedly flash before my eyes and eventually combined together to create a honeycomb looking mosaic so each little honeycomb was like a memory and I saw that all of that most of the memories was either me driving or walking somewhere for some reason and although they were more neutral memories the emotional state that I was in painted all the memories in a negative light and the feeling that it created was this constant dissatisfaction and yearning for more like I was on a never-ending search for peace and comfort, which wasn't too far from the truth from what I was actually going through in, in life. So it actually made me realize that, like, I'm always going somewhere, doing something, trying to get somewhere and never present, which is interesting. Um, yeah, so eventually the physical discomfort reached a tipping point and I ended up vomiting all over the bed. At that point, I asked myself like how I got to that point. I was very embarrassed and ashamed of myself, but it happened. And I felt better after that, but I was still extremely disoriented. Eventually, with my partner by my side the entire time, thank you, Parsa, you're the best. I fell asleep and I felt back to normal the next morning just a little dis disoriented from the whole experience but I, I don't even know what the hell happened like I took so long took so long for me to talk about this because I was trying to like understand and integrate the experience but I still don't know what the hell happened and I think like looking back it, it felt like I like barely broke through like I didn't break through completely and so I got stuck in the state of right before break the breakthrough, if that makes sense. And it felt like purgatory, like you're, you're stuck in this eternal hell, like waiting to, to go somewhere. And I was just stuck. And that, that was like the main feeling of the night, being stuck. And I think that's like the main, like what I subconsciously fear the most is being stuck in like a never ending cycle of suffering. And I literally, I like experienced the epitome of that <laughs> that night um i don't regret the experience at all because i'm glad that i i got to experience never-ending hell because obviously i'm out of it now and now i understand more than ever that my fear is an illusion my fear of never-ending hell although it's real i'm never gonna be stuck in that state because I get to choose, you know, and that that's just what I got out of the whole thing. So, yeah, I got stuck in, in like a weird and cold, glitchy uh, computer simulation for, I think it was like an hour that it lasted. But yeah, the next morning I just woke up. My friends were 
were there and they heard what happened and they were all like so concerned about me but I like wow it was so crazy and um yeah I also wrote down here I don't want this experience to paint or pollute anyone's experience if they want to try DMT like this is just my experience and like I said earlier like you got to have an ideal set and setting and I didn't have that I I just impulsively did it during a party in a room <laughs> and in a room that was actually really creepy that I wish I thought I could have picked up on earlier but so if you are curious and want to try it make sure you're doing it with people you trust and who have had experience smoking DMT stuff like that um and make sure you have nice lighting too it's like a serene tranquil environment because the lighting in that room sucked it was so bad um yeah and don't do it when you're sad or anxious or feeling like off emotionally because the whole trip exacerbates it and that i think that's with like any psychedelic um so in conclusion i think a lot of people would say i had a negative experience yes yeah, which is true but I, I also got a lot out of it because i went through the pits of hell and i came back and i'm fine and i'm back to normal normal <laughs> Um, so if anything, I feel like it, I really enriched my awareness, my consciousness. Um, and for some reason, it's like every time I do DMT ayahuasca, it's like I go through the pits of hell first. And I think it's, it's like me literally just being not even just confronted, but seeped into my fear just like completely enveloped in my fear of eternal damnation and suffering um but i'm here i'm alive and i'm happy to say that i made it i made i, I like i got through it you know and I know that a lot of other people have like extremely beautiful and awe-inspiring experiences to, to like meeting angels and other worldly entities, higher dimensional entities and beings. And I, I kind of, I wanted that experience and that's why I did it. But I, I just got stuck in a weird place with a contorted goblin. But no regrets, you know, I just wanted to share my story to make sure that you guys do it safely and in a sound environment and yeah don't eat anything beforehand <laughs> and make sure you have a puke bucket next to you um set the good intentions and um yeah be safe out there okay all right thanks for watching this video and if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification button and all that jazz. I'm going to be releasing a video once a week. So thank you. Have a good night.